Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of the uh, shear force diagram and bending moment diagram tutorials. Uh, in this second part, I'll be talking about the sign conventions that I generally or generally use, or we as engineers generally use to make things easy for us. Uh, I'll go straight into it. Uh, so here I have taken a situation wherein we have a simply supported beam AB. Uh, and a load of 1000 newtons is acting at the center of the simply supported beam. It, uh, the length is not important here. Uh, so it's acting at the center. So the load acting here gets uh, divided equally to the reaction at A and B. So R A is going to be 500 newtons and R B is going to be 500 newtons. Now uh, I'll go straight into the sign conventions that we need to use here. First thing is we need to consider a section uh, or we can say a place wherein we need to know the bending moment or the shear force. So I have taken an XX uh, section here, XX, it can be anywhere, I have taken it here. Uh, now the sign convention to be followed is, if you consider the forces to the right of the section and if the forces are acting downward, you take them as positive. Or if you consider the forces acting to the left of the section, and if the forces are acting upward, you consider them as positive. If you take the forces acting to the right of the section and if they are acting upward, then you consider them as negative. And if you can take the forces acting to the left of the section and if they are acting, uh, sorry, here if they are acting upward to the right of the section, you consider them as negative. And if they are acting, uh, and if, if you consider the forces to the left of the section and if they are acting downward, you take them as negative. Okay, don't get confused, too much confused here. Uh, just ca come to this example which I am talking about. Here, let me say I take uh, the forces to the right of the section. So the sign convention that I need to follow is, to the right of the section, it is acting downward. So this force is going to be positive. And here there is 500 Newton here. To the right of the section it is acting upward so this is right of the section it, it is acting upward so you need to take it as negative so the total re, uh, the total resultant of these two forces is going to be 1000 minus 500 that is going to be 500 newton okay now let us say i took it to the uh, left of the section here you can see that there is no load acting here there is only a reaction load but if you are taking to the left of the section and if the load is acting upward, you take it as positive. So in turn, you get it again as 500 newtons. So what we see from here is that uh, no matter which side of the section you take, the shear force acting at that point or the bending moment acting at that section is going to be the same. Only for calculation purposes, you choose, you take uh, right side of the section or left side of the section. You take the section wherein the number of forces acting are very less. So that the calculations become easier. Now uh, there is uh, two more effects that is sagging bending moment effect and the hogging bending moment effect. Uh, these two are considered when we uh, take into effect the, uh, when we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. Uh, if the forces acting on the beam cause the beam to sag then you take it as positive and if the forces acting on the beam cause the beam to hog then you take it as negative. We, I'll, I'll explain this in the next example here. I hope you understood the sign convention that we have used it, uh, used for the shear forces that uh, we need to consider here. So these two things are going to be very helpful. And then uh, coming to this example here, here also there is a beam AB which is some simply supported uh, and there is a low and it is of 4 meters uh, total length and a uh, load of 1000 newtons is acting at the center of the beam, so at, at a length of 2 meters from my either sides and uh, I have take, considered a section XX at a distance 1 meter from A so this uh, 2 meters I have taken a section at half of it so 1 meter from A so this distance is also going to be 1 meter here now this is a very important part here bending moment left of the section so let me say uh, I can let me consider the bending moment to the left of the section Okay, so this is the section here, xx. I consider the bending moment to the left of xx. And we know that bending moment is equal to the force into the perpendicular distance. So let me, see, uh, if we see here, the force is 500 newtons and the distance is 1 meters. So I have written 500 into 1. Now coming to the sign, 
is it positive or negative you can see that this force is causing the beam to sag will or will cause the beam to sag we are not considering this side we entirely forget about this side we consider only this side this part here so you can see that this force 500 newton will push the beam upward so it is going to sag the beam so that considering that we take it as positive so it's going to be 500 newton meters that is going to be the positive uh, because it's sagging now let me say um, I don't want to take the left side I, I want to consider the right side of the section so I take xx here I want to consider the right side of the section now we have two forces here that is one is the load acting and the other one is the reaction so bending moment to the right of xx is going to be rb that is the reaction into the distance so rb into 2 meters plus 1 meter uh, this is 1 meter here 2 meters plus 1 meters that is going to be 3 meters uh, so and this is sagging because this uh, we entirely forget about the left side of the beam we consider only the right side of the beam here so here you can see that uh, it is sagging because this is pushing the beam upward so this is sagging uh, the beam so this is going to be positive so 500 into 3 is going to be positive and then we come to the other load the other bending moment the second bending bending moment caused by this this load here that is negative of 1000 into 1 why do we take it as negative here you can see that this is causing the beam to hog so this is causing the beam to hog and or you can say that the beam is moving this this way only if you consider only this force so it's, it will cause the beam to hog so we take it as negative so that way we get 500 into 3 minus 1000 into 1 so that that is going to be 1500 minus 1000 that is going to be 500 newton meter so from this you can see that uh, you take it to the left of the section or right of the section you're going to get the bending moments the same at that section you have to get the bending moment same at that section uh, if you take it to the left or uh, right you take only one side okay and uh, which, which side do you take the side wherein the number of forces are less so that the calculation becomes easier that's the major part of it that's all so i hope you have understood the sign conventions that we are using here so this part is the most important part to the right of the section if it is acting downward it is positive and if you consider to the left of the section and if the forces are acting upward it is positive to the right of the sec section if they are acting upward uh, it is negative and if the left of the section if they are acting downward it is again negative uh, then there are a few more important points that you need to remember while drawing SFD and BMD uh, the, the points are, uh, have represented them here first point is shear force that the, these two points are the same things that I told you right now that is shear force acting downward to the right of the section is considered positive that is here and uh, acting upward to the right of the section is considered negative that is here and vice versa that is this is here this is uh, acting left downward and I have told you these things here now and then coming to the bending moment bending moment and shear force represent ordinates and length of the beam represents the axis so this is when we draw the SFD and BMD diagrams that I will explain it to you in the next part. So just remember that the length of the beam will be the Y axis, sorry the X axis uh, and uh, the bending moment and the shear force that we take is going to be the Y axis. So remember those two that the length is going to be or you can say that this length here this is going to be the X axis and the shear force is going to come here. So it is, it is going to be represented by the uh, Y axis coordinates that's all. Uh, then if the value is positive it is represented above the line and vice versa so if the value of the bending moment is positive so we have got a, the value of the bending moment as 500 newton meter here so if we take a line the bending moment should be above the line because it is positive if it was negative you would have taken it below the line so that is a simple basic stuff here that you need to remember that you need to know uh, uh, while drawing the SFDA and BMD then uh, the next point is shear force will increase or decrease suddenly that is by a vertical straight line where the point load is applied so this is a very important point here uh, where you are drawing the shear force uh, diagram that I will explain all of this in the next part 2 uh, in detail just remember these points uh, or keep them in your mind so what I have said there, here is that if there is a point load acting the shear force at that point will increase suddenly so that it is go, going to be represented by a vertical straight line there is no not going to be a horizontal line or a inclined line it is going to be a vertical straight line at that point where the shear force is a point load 
So that is a very important point here. And then uh, shear force between two point loads is constant. So this is also a very important line. Shear force between two point loads. Uh, so shear force between these two lines is going to be a constant. These two point loads is going to be a constant because these two are point loads, right? Uh, hence it is represented by a horizontal line if it is going to be a constant it is it obviously is going to be represented by a horizontal line so that is uh, the other point then uh, the final point is bending moment at the ends of a simply supported beam and the free end of a cantilever beam is zero so the bending moment at the ends of a uh, simply supported beam so here and here is going to be zero and uh, the free end of a cantilever beam cantilever beam i have told it to you how it looks in the previous video so you can check that out where the free end of the cantilever beam the bending moment is going to be zero so yeah that's it guys that's it for this uh, session here wherein, wherein i have talked about the sign conventions that we need to keep in mind uh, when we are drawing the, the sfd and bmd these are very important sign conventions these two are very important sign conventions which you need to keep in mind and also these salient points that i have told here mainly these two these two points that is the uh, shear force for point loads is going to be represented by a vertical straight line and uh, shear force between two constant point loads is going to be represented by uh, two point loads is, is going to be constant and uh, it is going to be represented by a horizontal line and the another one is that bending moment at the ends of a uh, simply supported beam and the end of a free end of a cantilever beam is going to be zero. Yeah, that's it guys. Uh, in the next video, I will talk uh, about the day. I will derive a few shear force and uh, bending moment uh, equations, I hope. Yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.